This is a video on how to do your own um, bridal makeup. This is how to do your own bridal skin. I thought it would be easier for me to break it down into um, sections so that you can do one bit at a time and you can really get to grips with it. So the key to really good bridal skin is thin layers. Not one thick layer of foundation to cover everything. Lots of thin layers built up coverage where you need it. So I've made sure that I've prepped my skin really well. I've used a hyaluronic acid and a really nice moisturiser. I've done my eyes first because that is what I would do. I'd always do my eyes first. And I'm wearing a white t-shirt because most people get married in white or off-white and it is good even if you get married in black or red. When you're practicing your makeup, wear something similar to the colour that you're going to wear. So that's my number one tip. So I'm wearing white, I wore cream off white um, when I got married. I would put my wedding dress on, but that ship has sailed. Before I get started, um, I'm not going to put one on today, or actually I will put it on today. This is my Bobbi Brown um, protective face base with SPF of 50 in it. Um, if you're getting married, in the summer or if you're someone who has rosacea or if you are someone who burns easily then you want to use an SPF but you want one that doesn't flash back and this is the one that I always use um, on my brides. As with all SPF you want to leave it on for a good five minutes to settle into the skin before you put anything on top of it. I also really love the Helio Care 360 um, and they do an oil-free one, so if you have an oily skin, the oil-free HelioCare might be the one to go for. So, first thing I'm going to start with is the Laura Mercier Primer. This is what I use on most brides because it is lovely and thin and it works really well. Um, so, I'm applying everything with my hands today. If I'm doing a client, I will use brushes. But on myself, I prefer to... Um, use my fingers. So a thin layer of primer, give everything time to settle into the skin a bit. I really would suggest using a primer on your wedding day because it's just going to stop things from moving. Um, this is the original um, Laura Mercier foundation primer. They do do an illuminating one but I don't recommend using the illuminating one because if you're having photographs taken you want to really control where you've got glow. They do do an oil free one so if you're someone who has oily skin then you want to be using an oil free one and you can use an oil free primer down here and normal primer here if you've got combination skin. Now this is <coughs> completely optional but this is the Neod Photography Fluid which I bought um, in an airport randomly because I'd heard good things about it and I used it I was going to Greece to do a wedding and I used it on the bride there and it was absolutely stunning. It does kind of um, perfect the skin and sort of give a, sh a sheen to it so I actually prefer to use this than a more traditional highlighter because for me it has enough sheen to it um, but it's not too in your face and um, it does seem really help skin look beautiful in photographs. So I tend to just put it on the cheeks, a bit down the nose because I have dry skin. If I had an oily skin I wouldn't be putting it here. You probably already have a foundation that you like to use. Um, I'm loving my Lime Life foundation at the moment so I would probably be very tempted to use that. But the one that I use on all my brides and the one that never fails me is this, which is the um, Face and Body Foundation from MAC. Some people don't like MAC, it get bring, breaks out their skin. Some people um, don't like MAC because they are owned by a non-cruelty-free company um, and they sell in China. That is personal preference. You want to be building fine layers rather than slapping loads on because what we're going to do is we're going to give a nice layer, make, always make sure to blend down the neck. And then I'm going to put a bit more where I need a bit more coverage. 
So I'm not going too far up under my eyes because I know I need a concealer there anyway. I'm going to sort of here. But I don't want lots of stuff sitting in my lines and because I know I'm going to use a concealer. I'm going to use a concealer here too, but I don't have as many fine lines. So I'm going to put an extra layer of foundation on my chin. You can see I have redness on my chin. I've also got a massive spot that won't leave. So I know that this foundation photographs beautifully, which is another reason why I use it. So it's always good if you're doing your own makeup to maybe have a friend who can give you an honest opinion on what she thinks your makeup looks like when you've done it, but also um, take some photographs of you so that you can see what your skin looks like. So then we're going to go in and start concealing. Um, I'm going to use a corrector. This is one of those optional things. If you don't need a corrector or don't want to use a corrector, then don't. Um, my dark circles bother me, so it's worth me investing in one. And this is the Pixie one, which is my favourite. Um, and blends really beautifully. So I'm going to go right up into the corner with this. And I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm just doing it where there's darkness. So this is the concealer I would use on the day on myself. Um, it is the Clarins instant concealer and the reason I would use it is it's got great coverage doesn't sit in fine lines and it's slightly dewy it's not flat so I'm putting most of the product again over the top of where I'm darkest and I'm blending it out to the edge so it all looks seamless and clean but there's not too much sitting on the outside corner. Another optional extra, if you're someone who cannot live without your highlighter, then I really recommend going cream. I can, I can live without highlighter. That dewy um, photography fluid is probably enough for me. I'm going to use a glowy blusher, but I know that there are some people who love their highlighter and the one that I would really recommend for this is actually from Trini London and the reason that I would recommend it is it is so barely there but when it catches the light it's really beautiful so I'm going to put that all over the cheek and again a really thin layer with the edges blended up well out before I do my blusher, however, I'm going to do a bit of contouring. Now, the contour that I use on most brides is the Chanel Soleil Tan. I love it. Um, I use it on brides. It works really well, but it works really well because I have a lot of experience with it. It is quite dark. For most people of my skin tone, um, slightly darker. The unbeatable one is the Illamasqua Hollow Cream Pigment. Um, for me, it's just the perfect colour. I really like the... Um, NYX Wonder Stick as well if they haven't changed the formula because it's been a while since I've had it um, because it looks kind of brown in the stick but actually when it's going onto the skin it's not too orange. It's also important to contour where your face needs it so I feel like my cheekbones just need a little oomph but I don't want to go too far down because I do go in here and if I go in take my contour down to here I'm going to look older. I don't want that so I'm going to go to here and back up and a little bit just there to give me some shape but I don't tend to do under here and if I do it'll just be with whatever I have left on the brush. Your wedding day is not the day for visible contour because you will look at the photos in 10-20 years time and you'll be able to say oh that, I got married in 2018 I can tell because of the go faster stripes on my face. So another step that is completely missable if you want it, but if you're someone who has a lot of makeup or wants to go the whole hog, then something like this, which is the Veil Cosmetics um, Illuminator or Touche Clat, if you've got that and you think that, and you realise that that's not a concealer, um, it's an illuminator, then if you have got dark circles, um, an illuminator can really help. Just give an extra lift but remember you've got now three layers 
or four if you put your foundation up there under your eyes which can crease okay so you just that's why you want them to be really fine and well blended a bit more concealer on my spot leave the majority of the product where you need the coverage and it's the edges that need blending because it's the edges that will show people that it's there my go-to bridal blushes are the watercolour blushes from Daniel Sandler because again they're cream products that are going to blend really seamlessly um, and they last all day Now I'm going to set under the eyes with um, the Daniel Sano Invisible Blotting Powder. Um, this is what I have in my kit. I don't have what I would use on myself, which is the Laura Mercier um, Secret Brightening Powder. But this I have in my kit and I use it on everyone. So that's what I'm going to use on myself. And I'm using a Louise Young Mini Puff. These are just fantastic. Now, if you have someone who has lots of creases under your eyes, apply the powder, and the same goes for the concealer, then smile so that you get your creases, and just go in again, because you can smooth them out a bit, so that products aren't sitting in there. I'm going to set... over my chin, around my nose, down the center of my nose. Then what I will do is I go in over the top of my blusher with a powder blusher, just to give it a bit more oomph. My go-to at the moment is Possible from Lime Life because it's a really pretty pink with gold through it. Um, I also really like May by Louise Young and Dolly by Louise Young for bridal. Fine layer just on top is going to help keep everything in place. If you're someone with an oilier skin you probably want to set all over your face. Um, I've done through the centre of my face and where I've put concealer. Then I'm going to go in with my ambient lighting powder um, because I really love the finish it gives and it slightly helps keep my makeup in place. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it. So this is the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. This is also great. If you are doing your own makeup, it might be that you want to do your makeup earlier in the day so that you know it's done because the last thing you want to do is be doing your own makeup and be panicking about time. You can always use a setting spray to spritz on your face when you've finished your makeup and it will reinvigorate your, your skin. So this is a really good thing. Again, of course it's an optional e extra, but this is something that I would suggest getting. And this is a travel size one and we do a Lime Life travel size one. So it's not something that is necessarily a huge a necessary investment because you can get travel size ones it's also worth getting ones that work and the two that I really recommend is this Urban Decay All Nighter and the Lime Life setting spray and they're both made by the same company so that is it it's not technical um, and it may seem to take a really long time but it's your wedding day you're going to want to take a lot of time but if you practice if I wasn't filming this and if I wasn't talking it wouldn't take that long you do want to practice this you can leave a comment that says group and I will add you into the Facebook group um, and don't forget to like this if you like it give it a thumbs down if you don't like it and um, subscribe mm. to my channel and I'll see you next time